Hi, I'm Carl from OSP, and this is Communicate, Connect, Grow, the OSP podcast. We divide our episodes across three themes, communicate, connect, and grow. This is a communicate episode where we have a bit of a refresher on the editing codes system we use here at OSP. Jam sits down with the newest member of the OSP family, Chris Fenwick, an experienced writer and editor with an interest in contemporary science and technology. They discuss Chris's initial thoughts about the editing codes and how they can help us at OSP be more effective writers and more transparent editors. This is a lightning tour of how the codes came to be and why they are so useful in our daily work. Please enjoy this conversation with Jam and Chris. Hello, Chris Fenwick. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. This is your first time on what we call OSPOD internally, the OSP podcast. Um, formally, we call it Communicate, Connect, Grow, which are were our founding principles when we started this thing off. Um, welcome to OSP. You are our newest communications consultant. How's it been so far? Oh, very interesting. It's quite nice having a variety of clients to work with, which is uh, different from before, I mean, I used to do freelancing, but then for the last four years, I worked uh, internally with one tech startup doing their comms. So going back to having some variety in the, the clients is, is quite enjoyable. Right. We do have variety. We have a, a bunch of different people doing really different things in the technical agency, technical product and open source project space. And it is a joy for me to be able to help people who are my my peers and my f- professional friends in the in the tech world that I come from help them communicate about their businesses, tell the right sort of stories to help them grow. And with our strategic advice along the way, five years into this now, we can we can see that it helps them, which is incredibly gratifying to me. And since we came out of open source, part of how we operate on a daily basis is to share the things that we learn and we know. And that is one of the reasons why we have a podcast. And that is one of the reasons why we're doing this particular kind of podcast where we share a sort of a quick tip about how we think about writing and editing. You have not been with us very long, but you have uh, encountered our editing code system. And so today, as we're sitting in the in the studio, we're, pre- we're preparing to talk about three different codes. And I know that you've been talking with Felicity about the codes. So that's where this next question is going. So, Chris, what do you think of this OSP idea of having a codified set of writing and editing codes so far? Yeah, I haven't been here very long so far, so I haven't had I haven't actually done any editing work on other people's copy uh, myself. So I've not been able to use them from that side. I think, in principle, it can definitely speed things up because you have a sort of a basic idea that is distilled in the code that then can be added immediately in a comment. So I think for an editor who already knows all the codes off the top of their head, for example, then it definitely speeds up the process of offering of offering feedback. And I mean, I've also noticed that the codes aren't just used to offer criticism, but you can put a sort of double plus sign and use them to show when something is done well. Yeah, so in our founding phase, s- several of us had come out of difficult work environments, and we wanted to build a culture that was the opposite of that. And um, we've been really strongly influenced by nonviolent communication, by positive psychology, by gratitude practices. And part of the idea of the editing codes, and exactly the point that you mentioned, we we have a quick phase in our process called the positivity pass. If the writer who you're helping has done something well, it's really worth stopping and and con- and telling them this is good. We look at writing and editing, first of all, as a collaborative learning process between peers. And part of that comes from my origin story where I would write something, basically throw it over the wall to somebody else who would do stuff. And I might or might not see it again before it was published with my name on it. 
in a form that I wasn't happy with. Or my boss would make 34% of it how he wanted and then run out of time. Um, and I had to guess what was going on. So I wanted to be able to learn and I wanted to be able to show people clearly what I thought. And so if you're told, hey, this is great, this stylistic choice, this, whatever, that's great. That helps you, that helps reinforce, you know, doing the good things. We also, if you've worked with less experienced writers, uh, uh, they, they, every word is their baby. And, you know, it's incredibly hard to take feedback. And also just as humans, it's really hard to deal with feedback in general without taking it personally. And I feel that having these codes, it lets us be transparent. It lets us be clear about our intentions and that it's, it's, it's also sort of systematic. And, and so that's not personal, but there's a psychological concept where if you're fighting with someone and you have a problem with their behavior, instead of saying you always, or you never, or you, 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 you can say this behavior, this thing, this kind of event, so-and-so, and it removes that conversation from them to talking about the thing in between you. And sometimes when, I, when I'm when in a, this kind of a conversation with someone, I'll even sort of, because I'm a very gesticular person, I'll like sort of name it and I'll wrap my hands around it and I'll move it to another place in the room and then I'll point over there to to like let my emotions out. And I find that really helpful. I believe that talking about the writing as a process and con these these naming these concepts helps us i believe the word is disintermediate the like separate the writing from the person and and helps the feedback go down better and another thing that we do in general is we use these to um we don't say hey you did this and i corrected it that was wrong now it's right generally will say, hey, this is the original and I suggest maybe this would be clearer or stronger or more colorful or something. And that gives the author the chance to say, hey, I love that. Everything's better now. Or they say, you know, I thought about this really carefully and no, I don't agree with that feedback. So I want to leave it how it was. Or what happens to me very often is I'll see what I originally did. I'll see a suggestion that's very smart and better than mine. And then Hey, somewhere along, there's something even better, like a third idea that 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 maximizes everyone's input, and um, and I love that process. And so this this helps us learn together. This helps us be cl clear with each other. It's kind of a whole communication facilitation language somehow. I know that's a huge amount of me talking about these things, but it came out of a, a whole bunch of experiences. And basically, Tracy, the other co-founder here. She's not a writer. I was editing her stuff. She was getting upset when I was making changes, but seeing that the result was better. And it was very hard for us to talk about why it was better. So in our first two or three years and with our earliest employees, we did a lot of sessions where I would edit texts and talk out loud and people would ask me questions as I was going. And we captured these things as we went. So I'm glad you like them so far. And I, and I, ho I, hope, you, uh, I hope you find them as helpful and useful as uh, as we have over the last few years uh, developing them and and applying them that was a huge amount of words that i just blasted at you um, do you i'm not even sure what the question should be um i i mean i feel like i have to wait and see uh and have spend more time using them yeah. also for my surprises. yeah no that's totally fair Okay, and in this uh, recording session, which we'll be releasing in the next couple of episodes, we'll be discussing uh, three codes which are quite general and generally applicable to good writing, uh, which are lead, clear, and gram. Terrific. So I look forward to it in the podcast land. See you next time in recording session land. Now we keep talking. Share your examples or questions with us via Twitter at open underscore strategy or email hello at openstrategypartners.com. If you'd like to learn more in the meantime, come on over to openstrategypartners.com. Have a look on our writer enablement workshops, case study offering, or get in touch to talk about your strategy or product communication needs. Thanks to everyone who contributed to this podcast, all the P's at OSP. Thanks to our clients who believe in us. Shout out to Patrick Gaumont for our high-energy maple syrup-flavored theme music. 
and to Mike Snow for additional horn arrangements. Thank you for listening and subscribing. About our three themes on the podcast, you'll hear different members of the OSP team hosting episodes over time. Communicate. All things communication. We share how we tackle writing, editing, word choices, formats, processes, and more. Connect. In-depth conversations with interesting, smart people about who they are, what they do, and how they approach their life and work as communicators, technologists, and leaders. Grow. We cover approaches to understanding and expressing the value of what you do, including tools, templates, and practical applications. We also feel strongly about building a mindful, positive, human-first culture at work. That's bound to pop up from time to time, too. This podcast is us figuring out communication, connection, and growing together. Subscribe now on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or the podcast channel of your choice. Follow us, suggest guests and topics, ask us questions on social media. We are at open underscore strategy on Twitter. Until next time, I'm Carl Richards, and this is the OSP Podcast.